joining us from both far and near, we welcome you to our AY program entitled The Songs of Worship, brought on by the churches of the Western 1 and 2 districts. These districts comprise of Cloje, Florida, Loreto, and Mongrambi in Western 1, and Wall, Samaritan, and Victoria in Western 2. I am your host, Tiwa Andrews, and I invite you to join us. Invite a friend as we explore two interesting areas, that of music and worship. From since time memorial, the issue of music and worship has been an interesting subject of debate, not just in the life of the Christian, but every human being, in education, health, finance, entertainment, and religion. While music has been one of the most accepted and far-reaching tools in today's world, worship remains one of the most displaced and unaccepted. It is generally understood among church leaders that music in church is often the source of division and dissension, and yet it can also offer moments of oneness and community with God and each other that are beyond explanation. This report seeks to encourage our awareness of the importance of the different forms of music in our worship and our faith as we seek to encounter God. Melody, rhythm, tempo, instruments, praise. 
What is music? What is worship? What is the relation between music and worship? Is there a right and wrong music for worship? There is much in store for you today. Stay with us as our praise team reads out in songs of praise. Good afternoon, everyone. And we are the members from Western 2 District and we'll lead out in the song service this afternoon. But before we do so, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father who was in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your holy Sabbath day of rest. We thank you whether we can come back to continue our worship with you. We pray, O oh God, that you will be with us as we sing. May your praises be lifted up and the blessings come down. This must be to ask in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen.
as well, everyone. I invite us to reverently bow our heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Our oh, Father and our God, we are so thankful this afternoon for the privilege of worship. We thank you, dear Lord, for knowing that you're an awesome God who loves us, who cares for us, and who is willing to pour your blessing upon our lives. We thank you, Father, for the blessing of the Sabbath day. We thank you for what we have learned this morning. We thank you, God, for how your Holy Spirit has manifested himself in our lives. And this evening, as we embark upon this afternoon's program, we pray, O oh God, that your Spirit will lead, guide, and direct. Lord, whatever will be done and said this afternoon, may be done to your name's honor and glory, and may men and women, boys and girls, be closer drawn to you. We pray, O Lord, for those who are listening in their homes throughout the wider world. We ask, dear God, that you will just bless, guide, and direct. May you give us a listening ear and a receptive heart to what will be transpired. We thank you for the participants, and we pray that you will use them in a mighty way this afternoon to spread your everlasting gospel. We pray, dear God, that you will continue to strengthen the youths of our church that father they will keep focused they will keep their eyes upon you knowing their lord that you are willing to do great things in their lives so lord we continue to ask of you to bless guide and direct for we wait upon you for tremendous blessing may you continue to protect may you continue to answer our prayers and may you continue to do good and great things for us we thank you oh god for hearing and for answering our prayer in jesus name amen Make a impact on our lives. It is almost everywhere we go. Many say it causes intense emotions and overwhelming joy within them, influencing moods and actions, thoughts and feelings. Which is why the power of music should never be underestimated. Let's sit back and listen to a special item of music followed by quiz time.
It's quiz time, and today we'll be looking at music and worship from the Bible. Question 1. With what instrument did Miriam lead the women out to sing to the Lord when the Israelites had crossed the Red Sea? With what instrument did Miriam lead the women out to sing to the Lord when the Israelites had crossed the Red Sea? A. Timbrels B. Tamarin C. Symbols and D. Drums You can get some time to choose your answer. Let me just read over the answer again, the answers. A. Timbrels B. Tamarin C. Symbols and D. Drums And the answer is timbrels. And you can find that in Exodus chapter 15, verse 20. Let's move to question two. In the book of Revelation, of what city did the angel say, the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee? Let me read it over. In the book of Revelation, of what city did the angel say, the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. A. Sidon B. Tyr C. Babylon D. Laodicea A. Sidon B. Tyr C. Babylon and D. Laodicea I'll give you a few seconds to choose your answers. And the answer is C, Babylon, indeed. And you can find that in Revelation chapter 18, verses, 20, verses 2 or verse 22. Question 3. What instrument does the prophet Amos say strikes fear into the heart of the people when they hear it? What instrument does the prophet Amos say strike fears into the heart of the people when they hear it? A. Symbols, B, trumpets, C, horn, or D, drum. I'll read over the options. A, symbols, B, trumpets, C, horn, and D, drum. You can take a couple of seconds to answer, to choose a correct answer. And the answer is trumpets. And you can find that answer in Amos chapter 3, verse 6. Question 4. They sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the living, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn that song except. Let me take that over. They sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn that song except. A. Those who did not worship the beast or his image. B, the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. C, those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And D, the apostles, angels, and archangels. Let me read over the options. Those who did not worship the beast or his image. B, the, the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. C, those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And D, the apostle, angels, and archangels. Let me give you a few seconds to ponder on the answer, on the options you had. And the answer is B, the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. Number five, speaking of Solomon, the Bible says he spoke. Speaking of Solomon, the Bible says that he spoke. A. 30 proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five. 30 and one proverbs and of songs but one. 3,000 proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five. D. 30 and one proverbs. Sorry, let me take that over. D. 30 and one proverbs even as his songs were 30 and one. All right, let me read that over for you guys. Speaking of Solomon, the Bible says that he spoke, A, 
30 Proverbs and his songs were 8,005. B, 30 and 1 Proverbs and of songs but one. C, 3,000 Proverbs and his songs were 8,005. Or D, 30 and 1 Proverbs even as his songs were 30 and 1. All right, let me give you a couple of seconds to choose the correct answer. And the answer is C, 3,000 Proverbs and his songs were 1,005. And you can find that in 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 32. Moving on to the next question. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with your songs. Blank. Sila. All right? So you have to do um, some filling in the blanks. Fill in the blank here. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of blank. See that. And you have A, hope. B, praise. C, deliverance. And D, love. Let me read over the options. You have A, hope. B, praise. C, deliverance. And D, love. All right, so you can take a couple of seconds to upon the options you had and the answer is C deliverance and I can find that in Psalms chapter 32 verse 7 all right let's move on to the next question Jesus compared what his generation said about two people to children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another saying we played the flute for you and you did not dance we moaned to you and you did not weep what two people did he have in mind? All right, let me read over that question for you. Jesus compared what his generation said about two people to children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, saying, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We moaned to you, and you did not weep. What two people did he have in mind? Or you can simply put it as what two people he was referring to. A. Herod and Pilate, B, himself and Caesar, C, Moses and Elijah, D, himself and John the Baptist. Let me read over the options. A, Herod and Pilate, B, himself and Caesar, C, Moses and Elijah, and D, himself and John the Baptist. All right, you can have a couple of seconds to button up on choosing the correct answer. And the answer is himself and John the Baptist. And you can find that in Luke chapter 7, verses 32 to 34. Then, next question. How did Jesus say we should worship God when he was talking to the woman at the well? How did Jesus say we should worship God when he was talking to the woman at the well? A with your whole heart, B, in love and peace, C, with your body and mind, and D, in spirit and in truth. Let me read over the question. How did Jesus say we should worship God when he was talking to the woman at the well? Your options are A, with your whole heart, B, in love and peace, C, with your body and mind, and D, in spirit and truth. All right, so you can have a couple of seconds to partner up on choosing the correct answer. And the answer is in spirit and truth. The next question, and this is our last question. Who told John not to worship him and to worship only God? Let me read over that question. Who told John not to worship him and to worship only God? A, the angel in the book of Revelation. B, Jesus in the book of Revelation. C, the beast in the book of Revelation. And D, the lamb in the book of Revelation. Let me read over the options to you. The angel in the book of Revelation, that's A. Or B, Jesus in the book of Revelation. You have C, the beast in the book of Revelation. And D, the lamb in the book of Revelation. So let me give you a couple of seconds to turn up on choosing the correct answer. And the answer is 
the angel in the book of Revelation. So today we thank you for participating in the quiz. If you get all correct, which is 100%, we congratulate you. If you get 50 and above, we also congratulate you. If you get 50% or below, we ask you to study more of God's word. For our uniform video, today we explore one of the most interesting areas in being part of the uniform work, drilling and matching. The primary purpose of drilling and matching is to prepare the squad to carry out an order. In addition, it teaches valuable lessons of obedience, respect, self-control, fellowship and leadership development. Now let's explore the rhythmic part of the drilling and matching, the cadence. How when you look? You're right! Your daddy was home when you look! You're right! Your sister was home when you look! You're right! Your brother was home when you look! You're right! The dog was home when you look! You're right! The cat was home when you look! You're right! The fish was home when you look! You're right! Your mommy, your daddy, your brother, your sister, the dog, the cat, the fish was home when you look! You're right! And that's the reason you look! You're right! I left my home! I left my home! Cadence is defined as the beat, time, or measure of rhythmical motion or activity. It has been used in the military since the revolutionary times as they needed to ready the troops for action. Now the military uses cadence to keep soldiers stepping in time while marching or running in formation. The cadence caller leads the formation with melodies and the soldiers learn every time that person starts a verse, their left foot should hit the ground. However it started, cadences have become as commonplace as a uniform. Drill sergeants throughout the military are taught the calls while they are learning to be the best soldiers they can be. These are the same ones I heard when I came in, and that was a long time ago. Some of them have changed. They have come up with new ones. It seems like whenever you have cadence in your match, it gets a whole lot better. While it's not a singing competition, squads still have clear favorites when it comes to back and foot calls. A good one could be our Pathfinder song. If you haven't tried drilling and matching before, now would be a good time to visit a uniform club near you and enjoy. Squad, dismiss! Songs are all around us, from birds chirping and waves lapping against the coastline to cars honking in the traffic. Such organized songs are called music. Music is a process of putting sounds and time in an order, often combining them to create a specific atmosphere or to express ideas or emotions. Now let's join our special guests as they lead out in a discussion. Good afternoon, sisters and brothers. We are here this afternoon to discuss a very important topic, music in worship, or music and worship. We have four very knowledgeable young persons here this afternoon who are going to help us to get enlightened on this topic. So I'm going to introduce the four kindness to you at this time. To my immediate right is Sister Laverne Ma. She comes from the Mount Brandy Church. Next to Laverne is Sister Timisha Fletcher, and she is from the Samaritan Church. Next to her is Brother Chad Forsyth, elder from Victoria, the Adventist Church. And finally at the end, Sister Shemaya Sopovic, and she hails from the town of Wolf. This afternoon, we're going to be sharing on the topic, as I said before, music and worship. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we, I think we all appreciate that music is something that all of us can relate to. 
music gives some kind of response, or it, it elicits some kind of response to all of us. And so my first question to you is, how important is music in worship? Anyone can answer. How important is music in worship? Well, for me personally, music sets the tone for worship. So it helps to relax the mind and helps you feel comfortable before the worship begins. Anybody else? Music sets the tone. It's important. Anybody have anything different? I think music is important to God because it was God who created music. He created angels to worship him. A matter of fact, Lucifer was a musician. Right? So I think God knows the importance of worship. He knows the importance of the music in relation to worship. And that is the reason why he created music. Because music is here. Amen. And just to add a little, I also see um, music as a vital part of worship. Just think of having a, a worship session, church, devotion, and there is no singing, there is no music. It, it feels dry, it feels dreary. It's clear that something is missing. Um, and so we all see that music, singing, plays that critical role of connecting you and real. We have that kind of emotional part of us, you know, and um, we can separate the, the music from that, you know, music boils up our emotion, it connects with God, it gives you a feel of mind that you like, you feel like you're opening yourself, you become kind of vulnerable to receiving whatever is in store. So to me, if you don't have a, a music, to me, it's like you're looking at, you know, worship is not complete. Yes. Um, well, for me as a musician, I like to reach in church early, let's say about 15 minutes before the service starts, and play some nice Sabbath songs, some nice Sabbath music, it sets the tone, it sets the atmosphere. So when members come in, with, no matter what the week was like, they come, they calm, they relax, and they're ready to worship and enjoy the rest of the service and to participate. Because coming in church just so without that nice soft introduction, whatever worries or stress you have, you come in it with that to go through the rest of the service. But if you have the music and you relax yourself and you let it go, then you're much able, better to participate and to praise God as you're supposed to. It is also said that music unifies people. Tell me something about that. Music unifies. Is it true that music unifies people? Or can you see that in relation to church and worship? I think it's it, it's good. Um, it's something that we see. Um, music tends to break down various barriers. People may have different affiliation, uh, from you know culture, races, class, social status, and so on. When you when you then you sing that same song, you become at one. It unifies you. You see it in sports. Um, you see it in various industries and so on groups. Um, you see it in business places and in church, obviously, it warns the whole congregation um, when when they sing and worship. You know, that's why it's important that when we worship at church, the whole congregation participate. I, I, I really, it hurts my heart when you have some service of praise and worship and you know, one, one member is singing. You know, see the disunity, but when you see the connection of persons, everybody singing and involved in the worship session, the church unifies. Very true. And um, um, I was reading somewhere that there are over 400 references to music and singing in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Paul gave a command to the church that we should sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So we know that music is very, very important. Anything before we move on to question? I think we were made with a musical mind. It's, it's somewhat natural. I remember um, a conversation 
that was held between, I wasn't part of the conversation, but one of the things the person said, can you go somewhere and hear music and not move? Mm -hmm. It means you're not from the Caribbean. <laughs> and I was saying to myself, is it a Caribbean thing? Or is it innate? Did God create us with that natural tendency to love towards music? So the words of the song, they are always there. You could read them. But they do not do as much to your emotions as with music. When you add music to the words, it does a lot more. It makes you feel different. It makes you pour out more emotion. It makes you, you know, I say, as 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 you were talking, it, it just brought me back to nature. I'm a nature person. And when you walk by the river, there's a lot of music happening there. The water going over the stones and the bigger the stones, maybe the louder the music. And you pass by the sea. Well, there's all kind of music happening by the sea. The the waves, the the you know the, the different um sizes of waves give you a different song. The way it sounds on the sand is different to how it sounds on the, on the rocks, and it sounds on the stones. So all of nature is just music. It's just when I have birds that come and come in the window in the school and just makes noise, that's, that's music. So God really, as, as, as you said, God really invented music and it made it for us to enjoy and of course to us. So we have decided that music is extremely important in worship, very important. So now we're going to look at our second question. What are the uses of music in worship? What purposes can we use music for in worship? Who will fit it first? Well, music, to me, one of its uses is for praise, you know, to glorify God, just to recognize His amazing love and grandeur. Good, praise, yes. Um, Psalms is full of music and songs, and um, you can use it for scripture readings or for prayers, have a, a section in the service where you just sing scriptures, or where you just pray the scriptures through songs. Mm -hmm. So it can be used for that. Mm -hmm. Music can be, mm -hmm. music can also be used for Thanksgiving. Um, I remember when my grandmother was alive. There was a day she was in the room. We speaking worship here, and what it doesn't mean church, right? Um, and I just hear she said to sing, sing, you know? And I was wondering, like, what was this sudden outburst of, because she was there now, going in the house, and she just started. And then she said, child, if you know what just happened. And I'm looking at her house, a lot younger then. She said, you have no, no money. And waiting on the children since last week as all our children and the states and they would usually send them on at a particular time. She grew here from them and um, she is someone that tend not to work much and she was going through some papers and cleaning and she found some money there. <laughs> but understand that the money that she found was some change from a store in the States about a year ago. Some Walmart receipt with how much I know much I can wish. And she just lifted her hands there and she said, God, you know you understood you. And I mean, I saw it there as a child. She didn't wait until she was in the church to give the testimony. Mm -hmm. She just poured out her heart to God there and she thanked him and she, the lady lift up she had, you know? <laughs> So, I can testify that music can be a form of thanksgiving. We do not always have to come down and we just say that we just the simple way. But we can sing it out to God like David did in Psalms. Sing it and pour out our heart and allow God to know how 
that are fully out of your control. All the walks for the result of our lives. So like you were saying, you were touching me. Um, yeah, and, and even continuing, I, I also see it, um, people confess um, to bring out that kind of contrite heart. Um, we also use music for that. Sometimes you're going through that experience and then you, you see how God can flip things for you. You recognize how much you mess up and you recognize how the good, the good gracious God is. Um, you just flip in a, a song just coming there and you, you speak your heart, you, you pour yourself to God. And so in worship I see um, music being used as that part of it, for confession. And um, on a line, along the lines of confession, um, we also use music when we're making appeals, like calling persons to accept Christ. We, we tend to use music for that, like passing out to a gentle savior. Yes. Right. We use music. I usually call music um, in, in worship, I call it the gospel according to music. And I see I see music as, as a ministry, I think as a as a sermon, as a mini sermon. So the person that sings in church is doing the same job as the preacher because they are preaching in song. And sometimes too, depending on what the song the person sings and how they sing it, sometimes you don't even need the, the sermon, sermon because the yes. song says everything. Yes. Um, one, one other thing that nobody said about music in worship can be for meditation. So, so the pastor preaches or somebody says something and she just wants you to meditate on what she says. And you just hear somebody saying, such me, O God, and know my heart to do. It's just, just for you to meditate. And he says it also better for you to Another thing that came to mind as we are speaking is I don't think it's for worship or for memory. Do you realize that we use a lot of music to teach children? Yes. And so in order to in order to remember some of the sounds, it does not any form of a song. Yes. It's easier to retain in memory when you do that way. Excellent. In fact, that was for the of person for for the person. Yes. Anything else before we go to the question? Yeah. Um, memory, I remember learning a song when I was in uh, in Sabbath school. Mm -hmm. It was um, the fruit of the spirit. Yes. And, uh, and yes. I still know it till this day. Yes. <laughs> and and in, in worship also, um, we, we, we use music to, to teach certain doctrines or certain things that might be kind of, kind of difficult to get. You know, it's like, it's like in school, there's a topic that's really hard, and you say, let's do a jingle and we learn that. So you'll, you'll use it in the Pathfinder Club, in the Children's Department, as it's as, 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 um, saying, that you use that to get us to learn the doctrine, learn the technology. Yes, and there's also another part that we do every Sabbath, when we're looking for the offering. <laughs> we always have music when we're picking up offering, whether it's in a crusade or in church, we have music then too. Because it makes us respond to so you. When, when, when we sing, give and it shall be given back to you, shake down. I mean, you'll have to open the purse and put on something in it, even though it's 25 cents. Or we give the but I owe. Whatever it may be. <laughs> Good. So we looked at how important music was. We looked at the, the uses of music. In, in, in church, in worship, and now we're going to look, we're going to go back to the Bible, because everything begins there. So let's go back to the Bible, and let us look at how the role that music played in the Bible. What kind of roles did we see happening with music in biblical times? Um, the one that comes straight to my mind is after the crossing of the Red Sea, when um, Miriam led the women with the timbrels in song and dance. So that's like a celebration and thanksgiving to God for saving them from the Egyptians and for making them cross the Red Sea on dry land. Yes. As you said, praise and thanksgiving, we know a lot of psalms and we will sing so much and make a joyful noise unto the Lord when we think about David and all. But one of that really jumbled anytime I think about is when David and Saul 
you know, he had his evil spirit, so he changed your mood. When he heard the nice music play, he had a cool, calm spirit for, for the while. So um, music can bring that transformation in your emotion and get you to think positive. Speaking about music in the Bible, and um, my mind goes back to when the music was played for Shenzhen and Shenzhen and Shenzhen to go down there to the edge. And what I'm getting is, despite um, the fact that music is able to play on your emotions, they stood from, they stood there long, everybody else heard the music and they said, I'm going to go. These three boys um, decided I am not going to go. It's like the music is being played and it's, it affects how I feel. They yeah. decided to stop. I love that. I love that example. Because that one is, is and, and that's what we see happening now. The people know how to use music to get people to respond. And Nebuchadnezzar, he since those days knew that and he brought out all of the instruments, everyone. And some of them must have bowed because those three boys were not the only three Hebrews there. But all of them forgot what they learned about bowing down. And the music took them and they just bowed. And those three guys did not allow the music to cause them to move. Very good example. Yes, Brother Chara, see you have one before us. I mean, I tried to reflect there quite a few. Um, when I think of Revelation, um, talking about the, the movies and people know us when we overcome. We will sing the song of Moses and the Lamb, song that the angels cannot sing. It should uh, rejoice in, mm -hmm. you overcome mm -hmm. redemption. You know, so singing is, is for praise and, and all of that in, in, in the Bible. But um, other instances, you will use battle, man. Every time yes. they go great word, remember if you, Joseph Fat, Joseph yes. Fat. Yes, Chronicles 20. Uh, God used that and he puzzled the whole army. Yeah. You know, they fight against the whole set, the songs get them messed up, man. That's right. um, so music has this, this good rule even in battles, so we see it in, even in today's world, in sports and things. You know, basketball fans, you know all those, mm -hmm. they, they listen, they kind of hype music. Yeah. You know, game time, and yeah. you play your music and you go there and you mash up everybody. So it's the same thing in the, in the Bible, I see it sometimes um, in, in wars and so the guys prepare themselves by listening to certain music and even when you when you praise God and you get that freedom of mind that you could you could do anything with God. Um another instance comes to my mind in terms of consecration. Mm -hmm. Um after the temple was built with Solomon mm -hmm. and he's going to dedicate it to God, he has music played and it was it was a twofold. It was a form of consecration and also as thanksgiving and grace. Yes. Very good. I like the one you want require one the battle. God told them nobody going out there with no spray and no shield, nothing. Put the choir in front of the ark and they just went along and they just sang and sang and sang. And I could imagine how baffled that, that the, the enemy army was. What happened to these crazy people? And I wonder in church can we not use the same thing? We know what the world how the world uses music. Why can't we have some battle Gospel ministry with only music. I take over the carnage. Take over. Which, yes, and because it was done, God showed us the way it was done. The army fought against themselves, and that was it. They did not have to lift a finger. So we know that music can be war. I believe. I believe. I believe. Yes. Sure, and those. Yes. Yeah. 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 I was going to believe. Yeah. Yeah. When you pour out your heart, and the right tells us that. Um, songs, music is basically to the mm -hmm. So I personally believe when we when we throw out our heart to God in song, um, there will most be like our champion song, mm -hmm. right? That's the power I have heard, never seen persons who have been on But I have heard of persons when you start singing songs like for one is love. Everything just changes mm -hmm. because the powerful message in the song is not affected. Mm -hmm. It cannot, it cannot exist. It cannot, it can stay quiet and such. <laughs> and so it's Very good.
Good evening, brethren, and happy Sabbath. It's a pleasure to be doing the Vespers with you this evening on the topic of music and worship. I invite us to just bow our heads before we begin. Our loving God, we give you glory and praise. We give you thanks for the Sabbath's blessings. As we are about to ponder on the topic of music and worship, we ask that your spirit would enlighten our minds and help us to garner a positive message this evening in Jesus' name. For some, it might be a matter of preference. Some would prefer it loud. Others would prefer it soft. For some others, it may be a matter of right and wrong. But whatever your position this evening, we cannot escape the fact that music plays a critical role in worship. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 6, the Bible tells us that even the angels in the heavenly courts above cover and reverence themselves as they sang music, songs of worship and praise to God. Entire books and, and chapters have been dedicated to music. One, for instance, is the Psalms. The entire book is, for the most part, about music and worshiping God and giving praise to Him. Still, there are other scriptures that gives us the importance of how music plays that critical role when it comes to the issue of worship. In Messages to Young People, Sister White says there in page 293 that music forms a part of God's worship in the courts above. In fact, when one sinner repents, heaven rejoices, heaven sings over the repentance of that sinner. In the book of Zechariah chapter 3 verse 7, we find there God singing with joy over the sinners who sought after him. We should endeavor, therefore, brethren, this evening, in our songs of praise and thanksgiving to approach as nearly as possible to the harmony of heavenly choirs. Skilled players of instruments, when combined with the voices of the congregation, brings about an environment much like heaven. In fact, music is a part and act of worship as much as prayer is. And so Jesus, in his discourse with the woman at the well from Samaria, disclosed to her that God is a spirit and God must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. In spirit, because when we sing in the spirit and understand the notes that we give, we have heavenly musicians who join and takes up the stream in the thanksgiving that we give to God. Therefore, brethren, the servants of God must cultivate their voice, Sister White says, to sing in a way that all can understand. It is not loud singing that is needed, but clear intonations and distinct utterances so that God's praise cannot and will not be harsh and shrill to offend the listeners. In truth, because music is one of the most effective tools of impressing spiritual truths to the heart. Many times when we are in despair, a psalm on our lips and a song in our hearts can cause temptations to lose their power. If heaven can sing, brethren, then redeemed men who escape the clutches of eternal death should have even more reasons to worship God in music. We live in a chaotic world, a world where depression and anxiety and stresses of life seems to be invading the life of even Christians. We live in a world where there seems no hope for the future. As a matter of fact, the Gospels informs us that men's heart will be filling them for fear towards the end of the world. Music, therefore, brethren, was made to serve a holy purpose. And you might ask this evening what that purpose is. 
music was made to lift the thoughts of men to that which is pure and noble and elevating. In other words, brethren, music is an antidote and a therapy to the weariness of the soul. My mind quickly goes to King Saul and the many afflictions that he faced by the evil spirit that was upon him. King Saul was depressed. He was stressed, much like we are today in this world. And so he heard about the ability and the skill of David on his stringed instrument. And so David was invited into the king's courts and David played on his harps and Saul experienced spiritual deliverance. Not only spiritual deliverance, but many are medical researches that were done that would have proven that the physical healing of the human body can be sped up using music as a therapy. Such deliverance, my friends, can only lead the unburdened soul to nobler and higher thoughts, to inspire and elevate the soul to worship God. Music is a gift from God and it was given to men to be a blessing, to be a form of worship, to awaken devotion and gratitude to God. But like every blessing, the arch enemy of the souls of men is stern in his efforts to pervert the blessings of God. Satan will stop at nothing to draw the mind away from God using music as one of his most successful tools. As a matter of fact, in the book of Isaiah, we are told that the tablets of the truth of Lucifer when he was created was specially designed for music. And it is believed by many that he led the choirs of heaven before he rebelled against the Lord of heaven. The arch enemy, my friends, has employed dark deceptions in music and has made it something sensual and base. Many have used this gift that God has given to glorify self instead of glorifying the giver of the gift. We ought therefore, brethren, this evening to be careful in this age of deception that we live, not to turn God's blessing into a curse. As I conclude this evening, music is a gift given by God to be a blessing to man and to be a blessing to God himself. Music is an act of worship, much like praise, as I said before. Music also brings healing, both physically and spiritually. So go ahead, my brethren, this evening. Sing. Sing and let the walls of despair fall in your life. Sing and let your prison doors swing wide open. Sing and watch the Lord work out the salvation in your life. Sing the dark and doubt away. Let everything that has breath, the Bible says, sing unto the Lord. Praise the Lord, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Be blessed this evening, brethren. Be blessed and let's sing unto God a note of praise because he's worthy to be praised. Thank you.